Hey, Meg Toes, this is Vention. Finally got rid of that scooter. Well, big things happening lately. Um, as you guys are aware, I have friggin' cancer. And I didn't really want to bring you up to date until I knew more about the situation. So I thought I would um, throw that out there, but the, the one constant advantage of being a MGTOW in a situation like this is that I don't have anybody uh, really moaning or nobody who's like financially dependent upon parasiting off of me. <laughs> so I don't have anybody who's like terribly full of anxiety and like in terror for her own well-being um, because I have cancer, right? Um, I have family who are concerned and friends who are concerned. And I got to say, everybody at work, um, all of my fellow mechanics and my foreman and my lead mechanics, uh, they are, they have just all been awesome. You know, they're doing their one of them, they're saying that if I am like uh, obliterated by the chemo or something and I can't work something like hard, like a like an in-frame or something, that they'll uh, find me <laughs> a job that I can do, you know, which is, uh, which is really cool. I mean, in some situations, I, I, I'm often put in working with mechanics who are not familiar with like engine work or um, electrical or troubleshooting of various things that, but they would still have all their energy and I might be in a situation where I don't have mine. So it's kind of, kind of nice. And plus I've got seven weeks vacation so far. Well, built up, so I should be okay. So yeah, the profound advantage of one of the advantages of the MGTOW lifestyle is that in a situation like this, hey Dan, how you doing? <laughs> Don't say my name. Pretty good. <laughs> Hello, no name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In the past, he has gone. Hey, how's it going? Blah. <laughs> I said, oh, sheesh. Delete. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pause you for a second. Oops. Okay. Well, oh, we were, my dad and I were just discussing his, um, his options as far as renting a place. And uh, he was looking at a nice place for about $1,100 a month. A nice house in a, in sort of a smallish town here in Western Washington. And about $1,100 a month. So that, uh, and he takes home with his retirement, he takes uh, 2,800 home. So uh, it would put a take a chunk out of his earnings, but it would be hard for him to find as good a deal as he's got here because I don't charge him any rent. <laughs> All we do is just split utilities. But in any case, um, yeah, back to the cancer thing. So we've got, um, I had a, um, I went ahead and uh, got the first, I got the colonoscopy and it was a big ugly tumor. Maybe I'll splice it in if you guys don't probably don't want to see that. And then um, after that I was referred to a CT scan which is sort of a mediocre res uh, scan which can show a few things like uh, it showed the uh, problem or a couple of things in my liver as well as in my colon. So, um, and right about then, no, and then uh, after that, I was referred to a surgical doctor who, uh, who basically uh, uh, was talking about, you know, the possibility of it getting it uh, surgically removed. Um, but then uh, I was scheduled for a, uh, for a uh, PET scan, which is where they inject radioactive sugar into your 
into your blood and then you uh, and then you basically uh, sit there for an hour while the uh, tissues absorb it and uh, as you guys are aware how uh, how thirsty um, cancer cells are for sugar and then what they do is they throw you into the something that looks like a big MRI and then they uh, they do a scan and that way they can image the radioactive areas so uh, so then after the PET scan uh, actually the same day I went to the surgical doctor but it, it wasn't available uh, yet but then uh, I just went to the oncologist and um, and I saw the pictures of the uh, of the uh, PET scan and sure enough I've got whatever it is has spread to the liver because I've got a hot spot there which um, is way more radioactive than the rest of the liver and it uh, it is clearly uh, about maybe the size of a marble so um, then on top of that I have of course the one in the colon which is the worst you know it's like rating 12 and the one in the liver is rated 6 I think uh, as far as hotness goes so anyway, then, um, uh, and now that was today. So, uh, and then of course she's going to want to schedule me for uh, chemotherapy. And uh, then after the, but first actually I have to be scheduled for a biopsy of the liver where they jam a big needle into your back and poke the uh, tumor a little bit and prod it, you know. And then, uh, and then basically they, um, get a piece of it and then they say yep it's cancer but it almost certainly is the way it's glowing so um, then after that they will probably schedule chemo where they have to put a, a big uh, fitting into your chest and then it has a tube that goes into a vein because if they try to do that through your arm it'll wreck your vein uh, because it's some such hideously toxic shit so that's all fun and um and then after the chemo they were talking about surgery to remove the tumor uh the one in the rectum right so um what i am going to do um is what i have been doing um the same day that the pet scan um became available and i had the pet scan done um i will uh I went ahead and got the dog medication um, and I, I doubled down on the uh, intermittent fasting and all kinds of supplements just man I've got a box a cardboard box uh, it's about a foot and a half <laughs> long by about 10 inches wide that's full of all kinds of supplements vitamin D um, amygdalin uh, novodilin basically uh, that's that uh, um, that stuff that's made out of apricot pits. Um, then you've got um, black seed oil, and I've got the CBD oil, and I've got uh, mega strength vitamin C that um, is uh, oil absorbs through oil. It absorbs better than uh, the regular type. And I've got, uh, geez, I've got so much stuff. I'll, I'll probably have to make a list. Um, and add it but anyway I'm gonna double down on what I am what I can do um, I'm gonna basically do another four three or four day fast uh, probably starting tomorrow but I have to take all of those supplements including that dog worming medication that's supposed to be really good against cancer and um, <laughs> and then uh, but it'll it'll wreck my I mean it'll I got really nauseated last time I tried to take that stuff on an empty stomach so I'll have to take a little something maybe a couple of eggs in a cup or something um, to buffer it <laughs> so that'll effectively make a five-day fast it's almost sort of a combo between an intermittent fast and a uh, and a real serious fast so in any case, that is the plan, and I'm going to go hardcore into all of the alternatives while the uh, conventional uh, medical system is dithering around. And then um, 
once that then hopefully the uh, I'll have those tumors shrank or knocked down a bit before they uh, start their chemo and then when if I'm convinced that these tumors are gone and get another scan uh, then I will put a stop to the chemo probably early in spite of the howls of protest from the medical establishment so uh, that's the plan um, I've only had five or six days on the dog medication <laughs> and uh, and about maybe maybe three weeks of hardcore uh, intermittent fasting maybe less so I haven't really had a chance to make the alternatives work as as uh, I would hope but I don't know if I want to wait um, I might go with the chemo in fact I probably will so uh, yeah, that's what uh, that's what we're up to up here at the Vention House. It's lovely news, but as I was saying, if if you don't have a a woman and her children, not not necessarily yours, um, to support, and you don't have all of that extra stress of of her moaning and wringing her hands and say, I'm really concerned for you, Vention, meaning. I'm really concerned for my income and my well-being and status, you know. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, I, they might feel a little something. It's hard to tell, but probably not much. As, as we all know, women, women don't really love men uh, the same way, you know, we, uh, blue, when we're blue pill guys, we can love them, like, unconditionally. Um, it just doesn't work that way. Um, they are just not set up for it, and it's uh, better not to expect that of them because you're going to be disappointed. But now I have like massive surplus income, massive savings, uh, paid off house, vehicles paid off. I can live comfortably on like I live comfortably on way less than probably less than 1400 a month considering I have to pay 300 a month for property tax on this place um, so yeah it's a huge amount of that is one stressor the money thing that a lot of guys who do who are undergoing what I'm going through um, and plus they are have to deal with and plus they are um, overloaded as far as their time and their their requirements for uh, constantly courting their wife to keep her from from monkey branching to some other guy um, and he has to hold all of that down and on top of that then he gets cancer too shit I'd be ready to freaking eat a bullet in a situation like that <laughs> so um, yeah um, Things are not great at the Vention House, but so far so good. We shall see how it goes. Wish I could give you better news, but it's not. It could be a lot worse. So don't get married.